All right. So, Dan. Didi. This is just me and you. Just the two of us today. Just a yep, reservation just for two. two. Of us. Yeah, yeah, reservation for two. two of us. Yeah. We've kind of been teasing this a little bit, but whatever. Right. The know, two of us. It, is, yeah, the big debut of the two. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's changing, though. So I'm this going is, yeah. to... Yeah, nothing's changing. Yeah. I'm still going to ask you a very serious question to start this. Okay. I'm ready. All right. So I was watching this show, kind of obsessed with over the last week, called Indian Matchmaking on okay. Netflix. It's incredible. It's like a matchmaker because like over, you know, in their culture, like they do like arranged marriages like still. But now because like, you know, millennials and stuff, there's mat- there's matchmakers. It's a little more difficult, you know, to do mm-hmm. these arranged marriages. So they have a matchmaker right. and that's what the whole show's about. And wow. here's what I'm asking you. Okay. Would you trust your mom or dad or whomever in your family, your sister to pick someone for you to spend the rest of your life with? Could you do in a like could you trust them to pick the person that you're gonna marry? Not a chance in hell. There's no <laughs> way. Literally nobody. And if any of my family is listening, sorry, not sorry, that there's nobody. Really. Maybe maybe one of my maybe one of my sisters. I'm not gonna say which one either, but um yeah, no way. No, there's there's no way. And especially because I've been through some of that stuff, like with my mom, we'd have like a conversation. I'd tell her that I, that I, you know, broke up with a girl and like, she'd get mad at me and she'd be like, well, we really liked her. I'm like, well, I didn't. And that's what you should care about. You know? So we would, there would be on the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way I could trust them to, I mean, even to set up a date, I, I don't even think I could do that, have done that. I just, you know, I've got a lot of faith in my family, but not when it comes to to that. I think I'd rather be alone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's extreme, but there's no, because I've had, a, yeah, I've been, you know, I've seen enough of that where I know that that would be completely horrible. I mean, what about you? No, God, no. Like <laughs> while I was watching that, I was kind of getting anxious because there are some where like the parents are very intense, right? Where mm-hmm. they're like, gotta find a gotta find a wife for my kid by December. And like I'm assuming it's like the summer or whatever. They're like, yeah. this is when I need you to be married by 25 in the summer. You're embarrassing the whole family. It's mm-hmm. wild, right? Mm-hmm. And right. I'm just thinking of like just my parents never, never. My parents, my sister, nobody, none. Like, no offense to them, but like, there's no way that they could ever do that for me. I don't know. What, just, what about what about the reverse side of it? We're both definitely on the same page there. Would you be able to do it like for your sister? Yes. You'd be confident. Percent. I'd be very confident. <laughs> I'd be very confident doing it for my sister. Very, very confident. Yeah. I feel like I could do it for most people. Most you people. actually, yeah. If anybody could, it's absolutely you. I'd put yeah. I put a lot, uh, a lot of stock in that. That's for sure. Yeah. Because you know when it. it's not the right person. So I'd assume you know when it is the right person. Yeah. Uh, you know, s- spoken from experience myself. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, think about it, Dan. You came out here to LA. Yeah. Uh, my wife told you to get new shoes. And now you're in a happy relationship. Right. <laughs> it was just as simple as that. <laughs> you know, just a little advice from the Dudleys. And here we are. I'm in the, you know, happy in a relationship. Everything's been good since then. Yeah. We can do this. But have you ever been set up by your parents? Like, has your mom ever, like, nudged you one way? She's tried. <laughs> She's tried to uh, with, like, her hairdresser or something like that. And Ooh, okay. I was just like, no, just no. And, you know, you know, she's telling me that we have a lot in common. I'm like, name something. She got nothing. You know, it's like, so you can't go based off of that. So she's, a, she's attempted to once. And, you know, I, I definitely had to shut it down immediately. And... Yeah, there's no way that she'd be able to line up somebody for me that we I'd get along with. There's just there's just no way. Yeah, I've never I've never been set up with my parents, but I've been set up by friends and they've all been terrible. Mm. And to the point where I've literally gone to those friends and said to them, "Do you know me?" Right. Have you ever met me? You thought that I should be dating this girl that like think, yeah, has nothing in common. You would think that your friends know you you know even though it's weird to speak about that with your family probably knows you the best but like on like a real level on how you interact with somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with you think you'd be able to trust your friends the most and the fact that 
that can't happen, I mean, no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> it's, no all chance. Our, it's all on our own. It's all on our own or a Netflix show. Yeah, seriously. Go watch it, though. It's very great. I'm telling I you, it's, it. it's great. I did see it scrolling through, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. What it's is on this your explore page. You're going to get to it. It's great. Okay. I'm telling you. It's just, it's fascinating to watch. Like, Indian matchmaking. Go check it out. It <laughs> What's up? It's Dee Dee and Dan brunch breakdown what's going on uh we got a packed show for you guys today it's just me and dan no chris that's a mystery we'll tell you about (laughs) we'll hopefully tell you about that at some point right but uh we've got a lot on the menu today a lot on the menu first we'll start off of course with get it off your chest we're going to talk about the rock own uh, now owning the xfl i i really don't understand it that much (laughs) um but but we'll see um dan's got an awesome topic tell us about that dan so we, obviously it's been a very unique year with 2020. We had an interesting discussion last week. And the one I want to bring to the table this week is if you could have one element, one normal element of your life back, forget COVID, forget anything. It's a safe environment. If you could have one element back, what would that be? So there's a lot of things to think about there, whether it's going to bars, going to concerts, sporting events, different things. So we're going to take a deep, deep dive into that one. Can't wait for that. Also, we've got Firefest. They're doing an auction for Firefest stuff. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to go through that. And I, I got to know if you would buy anything because some of it, it looks pretty legit. Not going right. to lie. And then we've got a bunch of rapid fire topics that maybe we'll get to, maybe we're not. But we'll, of course, we'll end with uh, what we're listening to. And there's a lot of been a lot of good releases coming out. So we'll yeah. be talking about those. But uh, let's get it started with uh, Get It Off Your Chest. Dan, go ahead. Get it off your chest, sir. Okay. Well, if anybody knows me, they know that I'm the king of pumpkin spice season. And for me, it lasts for roughly six months out of the year. And we're approaching that season. I mean, anything and everything that people find, you know, friends and family find something in the store they've never seen before. That's pumpkin spice. They're buying it. They're buying it for me uh, because I love it. And I'm basic that way. And I fully embrace it. I think Chris hates it. uh, But secretly, uh, he's a, you know, fan of he's supporting it. Um, so I'm I'm fully, you know, ready for pumpkin spice season. Now, with that being said, I've always had kind of my own rule where it doesn't start until Labor Day. So that first that holiday, that first holiday Monday in September, even though it's still summer and we probably still get 90 degree temperatures anywhere throughout the country, that's when it's okay to start pumpkin spice season. That's still very early for some other people, but this isn't for you. This is for me. I'm granting uh, a waiver, an exception waiver this year to start it a little bit earlier. I'm going to allow pumpkin spice season to start September 1st, which is a little bit less than a week early. It doesn't seem like much, but you know what? This has been a ridiculous year and you know we need to find something positive. And, and this is what I'm doing. I'm embracing pumpkin spice season early this year, something I'm usually not in favor of. Um, I know a lot of stores are jumping on board. Starbucks is jumping on board early as well. But for me, September 1st, calendar changes. We're, we're less than a month away now, now that we're finally into August. But pumpkin spice season, getting an early start this year for 2020 to embrace something positive. Um, and then that will last completely through the holidays into roughly uh, the second week of February for me. So um you know i'm trying to think of things that are you know to look forward to there's not a whole lot right now so uh the early exemption waiver for pumpkin spice season to start a couple of days early it's the official announcement for 2020 you're welcome everybody here's the thing dan <laughs> why not start it now like what are you waiting on it's still, I, don't get- I don't know i feel like it's still a little too early i think i need to give summer it's due because here's the thing we, I think Chris touched on this a couple of weeks ago where if we're still roughly in a state that we're in right now in our country with COVID and it probably, we probably will be in October, November, December, we're really going to have nowhere to go and nothing to do. We really won't even be able to go outside in most parts of the country, maybe True. not where you are, but we're going to be driving ourselves crazy with being stuck, staying inside. If we can't go to sporting events, if we can't, you know, still you know like for for over here where we are in pennsylvania a lot of places has opened up all these outdoor dining areas since reduced capacity indoor well that's not going to be around come snowfall 
So we could really be driving ourselves crazy um, for that. So I'm trying to, for that reason, I'm trying to embrace summer as long as I can, give it its fair shake. Um, maybe, maybe one of those last days in August, it'll get to the point. Jo- check back in with me within a couple of weeks and see if I bump this uh, <laughs> this start date up any earlier. But I'm trying to at least embrace summer for what's left of it uh, before we, you know, dip the toes into fall. Okay. All but right. I would, I would have it all year round if I could, because it's all amazing. I love it. Honestly would, but it makes me appreciate it a little bit more when I only have it for six months out of the year versus 12. I, no, I hear you. Cause the only reason I say that, why not just have it, you know, right now is just because like the only place that I go to really like on the, it is like target and mm-hmm. well, yeah, target and Starbucks. That's yeah. literally it the only places I really go to on a consistent basis right now. So I'm just like, I mean, why not just get it going? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. If I see it when I go to the grocery store, if I start to see that merchandise out, I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing okay. it. Okay. So I'll I be tempted. I think it's going to be out soon. <laughs> I'll be, yeah, it's going to be out soon. So I'll be tempted to, you know, I'll definitely purchase it and I'll be tempted to, to crack open uh, a little bit early if necessary. So we'll see, but it'll definitely be earlier than usual this year. Man, well, no, here's no. what I need to get off my chest, Dan. Okay. Um, I want to apologize to the NBA. I want to apologize because I said on this podcast several times, I've said to anybody who would listen that I thought basketball is going to be too weird. We could live without it. I'm wrong. <laughs> the NBA has done an incredible job with this bubble situation. I love what the arena looks like. I love how they've like basically just – I love that it's small. It's not like what um, what they're doing with hockey, even though hockey looks good too. It's because it's not in an arena. It's in just, I mean, it's in a very small looking gym. So they black mm-hmm. out everything and you just, and they have all, they've some cool court angles that they're messing with and stuff. The virtual fan thing we talked about it last week, I don't really love, but the games are good. Like there's really no defense right now because I feel like everyone's not in game shape. But right. the games are great. The guys are going at it, and it doesn't. And I don't miss the crowd. You know, even though they have some pumped in crowd noise and stuff, but I don't miss it. So I am really enjoying the NBA right now. And I don't know if I because I want to say I've been enjoying it more than I have in a long time. But like I love the NBA, so it's kind of weird to say. But like I and I think it's more so because we're just in quarantine. I have something different to see. But like I am, I'm in on on bubble basketball base bubble baseball i'm not in no bubble basketball no, yeah. i'm here <laughs> have you watched any of the nba have you watched any? I, I have i've watched quite a bit of it and yeah i, yeah, I had kind of same hesitation at first of was the quality of basketball going to be good was it just going to be too weird but i've been all in too man it's been really entertaining to watch with or without defense i think the presentation the game presentation uh has been great um the players are being smart for the most part besides lou williams and some others that we've called out uh being able to maintain the integrity of the game and of the teams um so it is it's it is exciting just because it's something different and we're seeing live sports again for the first time in a long time but you know aside from that we've seen how bad how that's not just that can't be all of it right that we're just seeing it because baseball's been terrible an absolute joke, and then they're not going to make it. There's no way there's a World Series this year. But with basketball, the presentation, the quality uh, of the whole presentation and everything like that has been really exciting to watch. So I'm all in on it. I love it too. Yeah, I'm all in on it. I, I, hockey looks good too. Yeah. But hockey never really wor- didn't worry me that much just because of the way that you watch hockey on TV. It's You really don't see the crowd. Right. You hear the crowd, but you don't really see it. You know what I mean? In basketball, the crowds, you know, the there are people on like all around them. You know what I mean? They're basically mm-hmm. people sitting on the bench in yeah. basketball. So it's like you're used to just seeing the crowds on, you know, on either side and stuff. But like I, I just love what they've done. But baseball, have to talk about this. Aaron Judge hit like his fifth home run in five games a couple nights ago. It's Yankees Red Sox in August. No crowd. Aaron Judge knocks this homer out, and they hit the crowd noise late on the Yes Network that it was like feeding from, and it was so it was so awkward watching him trot around the bases with no one doing anything. Just silence. And the announcers are trying to talk it up, but it just sounds makes it sound even more awkward. Yeah. And it's just it's just sad. It is, and that's yeah. It's just sad watching it. it baseball can't 
get it right. Yeah. And when you're in there, no. they're in the things with they're in their own home stadiums. It only makes it more and more complicated. Yeah. It's not a good watch on TV. I know there's some diehard baseball fans, uh, you know, out there that probably listen to this podcast as well, but you know, they have to admit that it's, it's not the same. Like it's, it's almost like watching spring training and there's crowds at spring training, yeah. but yeah, with, with that, with there being weird delays and like things that should be exciting, aren't exciting. You know, there's a shortened season. So a lot of these games count, you have rivalries like Red Sox, Yankees, and then it's just like, <laughs> all right then. So it's, 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 it's a tough watch. Baseball is right now, but I don't know. You think they're going to make it through? You think we're going to have a world series? No. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll have baseball. Uh, I don't. I don't, don't know if baseball will be around by the time we record the next brunch breakdown. Wow, so that quickly. Next Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't think we'll have baseball. I really don't. Oh, we, we already got two teams. Yeah, that have you know these COVID outbreaks, and I'm like, are we going to do a third? We're going to do a fourth? What are we going to do here? Right. Like, because they're already postponing all these things and. Uh, Trevor Bauer has been great to follow because he's just been like sounding off against Manfred and everybody else. Because and he's just like, you can't have a pitcher be warmed up and then not have him pitch. You can't have these players do that because like pitching is like crazy. What you're doing with your arm and stuff, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we're postponing the game. Last minute, don't care. You right. can't do that to guys, no. you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they have a routine that they got to go yeah. through, and you're just completely messing around with that. And it affects again, it affects opponents that uh, these teams have played that had these big covert outbreaks. And then depending on w- what park they're in, that affects other teams as we've seen it happen with uh, Miami and how that had the trickle effect with uh, Philadelphia and, and the Yankees and the Orioles and everything like that. So, so you're thinking as soon as a week, it, yeah, it doesn't look like it's on a good path to, to last. I was going to say, we're definitely getting, um, you know, pumpkin spice season without baseball <laughs> this year. So be ready for that. Yeah. Next week. Done. That's that's what <laughs> I'm calling call it. We it's will, coming a shot. We will be out, out out of it by by next week for sure. <laughs> All right, well Dan, let's get into uh let's get into another big topic this week, one that's near and dear to your heart for sure. Yeah. The Rock now owns the XFL out of nowhere. About what was it 15 minutes before they were filing for bankruptcy, he went yeah. in, bought the XFL for like a quarter of what he does a movie for. And <laughs> Right. Uh, for 15 million it was and now the rock owns the xfl uh, what the hell does this mean i have no idea i have no idea either i was so confused when this new came ac- news came across and it is near and dear to my heart because uh i'm a huge fan of the rock but from his wrestling days and naturally the xfl being a wrestling slash vince mcmahon creation um you know, when the XFL first came back this year, I think a lot of people were relatively pleased with it. Um, it was doing better in a view, in the in viewership from what was the other one that they came up with? The, the Alliance a- of America, a- 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 so. AAF or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever um, it was. <laughs> you know, and that quality of football wasn't great. And this one, the XFL wasn't much better, but I think it was exciting because of the rule changes and things like that, the different things they were experimenting with. Um, little did we know it was, you know, potentially going to be the last football we see until who knows when at this point, to be honest, Seriously. Um, <laughs> but you know, he, he was, the rock was a former, you know, college football player played at university of Miami. So he has a passion for the game. And I guess he's doing it to give those guys who aren't like automatically good enough for the NFL to give them a chance. Uh, so he really has a personal, you know, touch with it, but, I don't know if this is good timing or a good idea. And there's still a lot of information that has to come out, whether or not they're going to try to play next season, quote unquote, which would be, you know, the, you know, what February, March of 2021. This is not a good idea, a good time to get into a sports league that just failed. Um, (laughs) Now it failed because of the circumstances going on with uh, the pandemic. Um, Mostly, not completely, but mostly. So it's an interest. It's a, but it's a cheap investment, right? You know, there's, I guess, potential there. But you know, I think it's all going to come down to like who's going to actually run this league. Is the is the Rock going to be running this league? Is he going to set up a commissioner? Uh, like Vince McMahon brought in Oliver Luck last time, who mostly knows what he's doing. So I'm very, very intrigued. Almost more so now than the first time it came back. Now that the Rock's involved. Yeah, I, I, because it makes me think that like The Rock 
has an idea like has has a better idea i don't think yeah. it never seemed like vince mcmahon had a better idea than other than i'm just going to change a bunch of rules and then we're just going to throw guys out there and figure it out just like the last time right mm-hmm. i it, it makes me feel like if you have the rock in who is he's somebody who's not you know he's not a dummy the rock doesn't just throw around money for no reason there's right. no reason for the rock to be like i'm going to own half the xfl you know what i mean mm-hmm. unless he actually has a plan or knows some or trust in somebody else that's a part of the group or whatever that is you know that has a plan so i'm interested i don't i i really don't get it i just am like okay i mean more football is fine you know and i think that's another thing it's like no one's going to compete with the nfl think you're going to compete with the nfl stupid but like saying there can't be football in the spring is silly why not like yeah. you can have football in the spring all these other sports go basically out, like all of the year anyways except for summer and then baseball comes and it takes up spring summer and fall you know everyone else takes up three seasons there can be more football you know it doesn't just have to be the one league i think i think people will watch it as long as it's not like a joke right i think and i think i think you touched on part of it there where even though the xfl was played during the nfl offseason i think when vince mcmahon ran it he was still looking at it as competition against the NFL, right? And he had that mindset. And that's why there were all those issues with like, if an XFL player wants to go to an NFL team, it wasn't easy for them to do at all. But I think maybe the rock will look at this differently. Um, and he won't look at as look at it as competition, uh, versus the NFL that he'll really looking at it, at it as a breeding ground. And again, taking back to his story where it's giving those guys a shot, giving those guys a chance and if they make their way up and perform really well and have a chance at the NFL, he's going to let them go. Um, again, we don't know that yet, but it's just, I think you're right with him. He's having a different idea about how this league should run. And I'm hopeful that that'll be part of it. Next, I think it could be more successful that way when you kind of look at it as its own entity um, and have a little bit of, you know, camaraderie, you know, with the NFL maybe to make this thing work. All right. Well, Dan, let's get into the main course, dude. Main course. I want to get into your topic, man. I want to. I want to. Ta- I want to dive into <laughs> this, man. So set this thing up. Let's go. So, you know, we're all desperate to get some sort of normalcy back in our lives, and realize it's probably still going to be quite some time. Um, but I'm getting bored. To be honest with you, I'm getting bored. <laughs> Running out of things to do. Um, so it just had me thinking again because there's nothing else to do besides think. But if you could have one element back of your normal life from yesteryear, what would it be? Again, thinking that it's a completely safe environment, COVID free, and that it would be kind of set up normally as it is. You know, for some examples, it's like you want to be able to go to a bar and sit at a bar and not have to worry about, again, wouldn't have to worry about anything, no masks, no nothing. Um, And you'd be able to do that as often as you want. Uh, Like, would it be, going to concerts where that's a little less frequent, but you know, maybe a little bit more unique, uh, going to live sporting events. We talked about how everything we're watching on TV with no fans right now, would you rather be sporting events, uh, parties going to like bigger parties with friends and being comfortable. I know there was just that, what that party just got busted in Beverly Hills. The police got called on them, right? There was a bunch of people there. (laughs) Oh my God. You know, be able to do that without having to worry about, um, things like that, you know, going to festivals, beer fests. I, I'm a big fan of going to beer festivals and you know, those are completely off the table this year. Um, so I'm curious, like what, if you could only pick one element, you know, to, to go back to, and again, not just one time for, but you know, maybe a period of a month where you get unlimited access to bar concerts, sporting events. What do you, uh, what are you picking to get some normalcy back with? See, this is hard because there's like levels to this, right? Yeah. Because it's like, what do I miss the most? I miss concerts the most. Like, I I live in the city where there's a concert every single night. Like, every, on every block, there's multiple concerts everywhere, right? Any music you ever want to hear in your life. So I miss that the most. I do. But if I could have one element back, it would just be like, I just want to, I, I want to go to the, I want to be able to just go to get my hair cut. <laughs> like... That's it. I want to be able to just go get my haircut if I need my haircut. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Like, because sometimes it's like, you know, I get my haircut probably like once a month, right? So, but sometimes, you know, I'll have to go shoot something or whatever. Like yesterday, I had to go shoot, so I had to like shoot something over Zoom. That was a really big deal. But like, had to make sure I was allowed to wear a hat because I'm like, I got mad quarantine yeah. hair right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got quarantine hair right now and I couldn't just go get my hair cut because like I could just go do that. That's what I wish I could do more than anything is just be able to go get my hair cut whenever I want it. If I need to get a hair, haircut next week, I can just go. If I need to get a haircut tomorrow, I can just go. Like you can't do that right now because I feel like they're closing. They close like hair salons, barbershops. Like it, there's different rules every day. Like for for that here, it's wow. you know one day they're open, like one week they're open, then the next week it's like all right, if you want to hair, you want to cut hair outside in your parking lot, you want to set it up, you could do it then. Then it's like all right, everything shut down, and then they're open again, they're shut down again. It's like it's been they've probably been closed and open probably like four or five times, and I, yeah, and I know a lot of barbers are doing um like at home things, and I'm like super clean, and I trust my barber, but I'm like mm, I I just. Yeah, I just can't do it. I don't, I don't want anybody in my house. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so it's, but yeah, but that's what I would have wow. going back. I would want that more than anything. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, there is, there's a lot of layers to this. I think I'm with you there where I think I miss going to concerts the most. Now, obviously I don't have is the ability to go to them as frequently uh, as you. And I really wish I did, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I'm, a, I think I could let that one go. For now, for, for now, for now, for now, let's just get that clear. I'll yeah. tell you what, next year at this time, we better be concerts deep by now, um, <laughs> no matter what the size. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know if I would pick that one. Part of me just wants to, I kind of think Chris would, well, not to speak on behalf of Chris, I want to speak on behalf of Chris. I think part of him would say sporting events so he could go to a football game. I think that part, but he's mentioned to to us and to me many times how much he misses even just going to a bar and sitting at a bar uh, and just being able to do that. Um, so that part, that part, uh, it hurts. That part bums me out. You know, even though we can still go to restaurants, it's just not, not the same, man. I came up with this question. I really don't even have a good answer for what I <laughs> want to do the most. I think, I think it maybe would, I guess you could say travel, which I know you can still do, Ooh, but okay. you also shouldn't, <laughs> You know, like traveling to, you know, L.A., something I, I like to do frequently and haven't been able to do in a long time now. Um, not being able to to do that, I think even just being able to do that once would be a big relief uh, to be able to take a vacation um, without having to be so worried about where it is that we're going, who we're going to be around, what can we do, what can't we do. So I think like just getting in an airplane and traveling and going to a different city and enjoying it is something that I would probably like to take to take the opportunity to have for one, you know, one period of that, uh, some normalcy back because it's like a long time of going from like, in, like, when can we travel again? You know, we still don't know when that's going to be. We think, I think that some of this other stuff could open up before that, but who knows, man, there's, you know, a lot that could, uh, that we could all benefit from one of these if in this fantasy question, but um, I don't know. Travel. I think maybe, maybe travel would, would be it. See, travel's good because like we went to, we went to Palm Springs. We were there for two weeks, uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were there for two weeks and I love Palm Springs. You know that you love Palm Springs as well. I got married in yeah. Palm Springs. We love the place, but it was just, we had to rent a house with a pool and it was awesome. But the thing is we couldn't do anything else. It was just like, we left, Pretty much because we were going crazy inside our own house. Like, it was just like, we have to get out of here. We have to, like, go change it up. And it was awesome. It was it was great because we were just finally, like, away from just where we had literally haven't left for other than going to the grocery store for the past, like, five months. So, like, it was awesome. But it was just weird because we traveled someplace that we loved. We loved to go do things there. We loved restaurants there. We just love it there. And then you can't do anything. It's like, I would love to be able to travel with no restrictions because yeah. you could come here. 
we can't do anything. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you can go, like, it's like, I could go home, but I can't see my friends. Mm-hmm. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. can go places, but you can't do anything. And like, I'm not trying, you know, it's like, we talked about this last week. Like, I have older parents. Like, I can't just travel across the country and go see them. No, but I could just, you know, go to Pittsburgh and sit there by myself. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and do absolutely nothing and wear a mask around or whatever. But yeah, traveling with no restrictions would be awesome because I would just love to be able just to, I don't, just have some kind of normalcy because that's what sucks. Even with restaurants, have you gone to, have you been into a restaurant doing the I mask have. thing? Have you yeah. done that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was, how is that? It's weird. It really is weird. <laughs> it's almost like we debate like every time we do it, like, is this really worth it? You know, yeah. you know, we did take out for so long. So it's like, okay, this is a little bit. And we, we kind of scope out the, the restaurants. Our, our first priority is being able to sit somewhere outside. I think we've sat inside somewhere once and it was almost and we didn't know that we thought we were being sat outside until we got sat at this inside table, but we were in like this, like almost private room where there was no one else around, but having the yeah masks on the whole time you're, you're, you're dealing with it. You know, everything has to be a paper menu. Um, it is, it's, it, it is our, you know, start to be part of the question. Like, is it worth it? You want to make sure like the, the waiter or the waitress feels comfortable. Do you feel comfortable? So it is, it's, it's, it's strange. It, it it really is strange, and that's why I, th- I agree with you. With, um, you know, with the idea of being able to go somewhere to do those type of things. That's what traveling is all about. Like I've got all these vacation days. What the hell am I supposed to do with them? Like, s- like take a day off to sit at home when I'm already working from home. Like I can't go anywhere. Can't do anything. So I got all these days I have to to burn through and use them trying to like figure out. Like, and I'm not one to go to the beach anyway, and nobody should be going right now, by the way. Dude, so please stop. Dude. Please stop. Um, Can we talk about that? Like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable like, how people are still doing that. You know? I, I, I Listen, I understand that trips are booked in advance. I understand. They're, like, these trips that people take to Myrtle Beach, Virginia Beach, whatever beach you go to, but, like... You can't go right now <laughs> and then bring it back to wherever you're from because that's how all that's how we're in this mess. It's because people are going doing their trip to Florida where they drive 15 hours down to wherever and then we're coming back to wherever they're from. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that right <laughs> now. You just can't do that right now. It is so stupid to do, but like People just, I, I, I just, it makes me cringe when I see that people are just out there, just like, no, we are going on this vacation because right. it is summer and I don't care. Yeah. I don't, I don't get that. There are trips you can take. There are smart trips like you, you can take, like you did uh, when I was in Deep Creek a couple of weeks ago. That's, again, it's sort of like, okay, we're here. Now, what do we, what can we do? Not a whole lot, but at least it's a change of scenery. But, you know, these people that are traveling to these hotspot destinations and you're seeing like videos of people just like the beaches are covered uh, with people. It just it it blows it blows my mind. It does. But um, I'm I'm in that situation where it's like, okay, where are the safe places we can travel to by car where we can avoid people? And I got to use these vacation days up because you lose you use them or lose them. And so it's just this weird situation. So that's why I think traveling you know, because I don't want to take a day off to sit at home. I just, that's not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, it, it, me and Siobhan, we're doing, we're going through that same thing. It was like, I'm not taking a day off just to sit at home. No. I can't just take a day <laughs> off to sit at home. And I'm like, I can't, and I can't blame you. I'm like telling her to take days off, but I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, but you don't want to lose them. Exactly. You know? But it's also like, I just, I'm just going to sit here. So I'm just going to sit here and do what we do all day long. Every you day know what I mean? Right. Like, I, yeah, you can't. It's like, I don't have any grass to cut. I'm not going to take a day off to cut grass. I'm not <laughs> taking a day off to do anything. Like, what are we doing? Exactly. It's, like, at yeah, this rate, a, I'm going to be off the entire month of December. And then I'm not going to be able to go outside anyways because it's going to be December. So it's really yeah. going to be a waste. 
Yeah. And then it's all then it's all going to be a mess. But that's like a whole other depressing conversation oh, yeah. of what it's yeah. what this whole thing is going to be like right. when it's actually like dark outside and cold outside and it's oh, October man. and whatnot. That's just going oh, to be an it. absolute, absolute mess. But yeah. uh, Dan, but guys, let us know at Brunch Breakdown. Yes. What do you think? What, what's something that you would take that you want back in your to make your night life somewhat normal? But there's only that one thing, that one thing. I think a lot of people are probably surprised we didn't pick concerts. I'm surprised myself I didn't pick concerts because that's the first thing I was like, it's concerts. But then I'm like, wait, like concerts are here and they go to them a lot. But yeah, it's the simple things that yeah. I wish I could have back. Right. And I think that's probably what kind of started the the question in my head was probably concert related. Yeah. Um, and it sucks without them. I will 100% say that right now it absolutely blows but you know it's 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 close up there for me um i know they'll be there eventually but right now i need more of an escape i guess and i would take take uh take that for anything but yeah definitely uh hit us up at brunch breakdown i'm curious what the listeners uh what they would do yeah that's what that's what i want to know um and speaking of concerts though glastonbury looks like it's not coming back till 2022 which does not because that's the little thing that was floated out there. And I feel like every time something's been floated out there for a festival or, you know, sports or whatever, it's been pretty much true at this point. Yeah. And if glass and if something's floated out there, with Glastonbury 2022, then that is bad news for our favorite festival, which is Coachella and any other festival that anybody else goes to, because it is it's that's that's trouble. And it's all about the insurance and people saying that they got if something happens because if they you know something happens and they say they got covid from coachella there's no way to prove that right so the insure it's just like a jockeying with the insurance companies because they don't want to be like giving forking over all this money over something that like you could have got covid at the gas station that you stopped at you could have got COVID anywhere because we just don't know. You know, I mean, there's not enough information. It's a new virus. That's what novel means. And for those who just are stupid. Um, but, yeah, it's like we're learning about this virus every day. And insurance companies are like, we don't care. Like, we're like, no, nah, we're like, nah, nah, we're not we're not about to, like, deal with that stuff. So that's not looking good. That's frightening yeah. to hear. It is. I just watched the. 2020 version of Lollapalooza, which they did mm. on their uh, YouTube channel <clears throat> this past weekend, which was supposed to be obviously in, in Chicago. Um, but they basically just did, uh, they had a schedule of old sets uh, from m- multiple years past, not just like it wasn't just 2019. Um, and it was just, it, it gave me that like sense of that connection again and what it felt like to be there. Um, like we wa- like one of the ones that I watched the entire set of was, uh, chance the rapper from a couple of years ago and his set there. And of course being in Chicago, it was even more special oh. for him. It was so, it was so incredible. And it just like, I get that excitement of it, but then I was just like, gosh, I got to get back. We got to get back to this feeling in person soon because of like what it means and how many, how often you, we do it. And like you said, what Coachella means to us. And so. Another year off would be would be a rough Ugh. one. It certainly would. Oh, it's it's all it's just it hurt when I saw that about Glastonbury because I'm like, if they're not having anything, no one's having anything. Right. Yeah. So it's not good to hear. Yeah. We just have to hope and pray every night for this vaccine. That's what we have to hope for. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Got to do that. <laughs> now, Dan, I got some um, I, I got to there's some rapid fire things. A lot of rapid fire topics. Let's do it. So, I, I can't wait. Ready? Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Um, Dunkin' Donuts closing 800 stores, basically because of COVID, just ravaging through everything. Which coffee is yours? I know we talked about. I know we talked about pumpkin spice, but you didn't say what your if if, if Starbucks was your one. I mean, where are you going to get your coffee? What's your what's your thing? Well, that's an interesting take because yeah, I don't I don't really have a great. I'm, I don't get pumpkin spice lattes, so it's not okay. that for me. And what's really difficult is I like a medium roast coffee or like towards the darker end of thing things and almost every flavored coffee especially pumpkin spice is light roast so it doesn't work that well for me so i have to try to find it every year and it's extremely difficult 
Um, you know, I think Starbucks is the closest thing, but uh, for coffee in general, it, it's Starbucks. I'm a Pike Place guy. Uh, I have that when I'm at home. I have that when I go there. Dunkin' Donuts is good, uh, but I'm a you know Starbucks guy when I'm getting coffee elsewhere or on the road somewhere. Um, but uh, I do love Dunkin' Donuts. I do love Dunkin' Donuts. That's that I got one right down the street. That's the closest one that I have to me. Any coffee shop, that's the closest one. And you know, I swing in there out of convenience, and you know, I'm I'm grabbing food. I'm grabbing food while I'm in there. It's easy for me to go into a Starbucks and not get something out of their like, you know, container of food of stuff that's been sitting there for like a day and a half and almost looks fake, you know, it but it's actually looks better. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> It right? always looks fake. And it's like, it's, but it's not. And when you get it, it looks better, but you're still like visually a little off from that. Yeah. Um, I don't get that. I Dunkin' Donuts, too. I have to go in there and, and get food. I can't walk in there and just get uh, coffee. So, you know, I appreciate them for their ability to, to get me to get a donut or one of their breakfast sandwiches when I'm in there at any hour of the day. Yeah. It's like, is has that coffee cake been sitting there all day? Right. <laughs> It's like it just it just feels weird. Like anytime you get a sandwich from Starbucks, you're like, "Well, you're grabbing that one." Yeah. Like I just thought that was there for show. Yeah. Is it just the lighting bad in there? Like what's I, what's going on? It just doesn't weird. look good. But it's every Starbucks. It's something about what they do. But yeah, the Duncan thing hurts me because I because they put just put so many Duncans in L.A. Basically from the time that I've moved here, it's like it was a big deal. There were lines around the block when Duncans showed up, and now there's like a bunch of them around the city and i wonder how many are going to close because i need the ones in my area to stay because i love duncan haven't been able to get much duncan because i haven't really been going to many stores so i've been doing drive through and there's not that many drive through duncans here right so like i'm like i i need my duncans to stay past COVID. so that was that worried me a little bit yeah i hope that none of them near me are are going either especially that one uh down the street we'll be we're, we're praying for you duncan we're gonna you know make the best and hope that you yes. make it through at least where where we live but uh that's 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 rough to hear 800 stores 800 yeah that's a lot of stores yeah yeah, yeah. all right fire fest we all know the fire fest we we're all obsessed with it what was it was it a year ago or two years ago that we were all obsessed fire we were finding out all the stuff about fire fest watching all the documentaries i think mm-hmm. that was like 2018 and uh if you haven't watched the fire fest documentaries on hulu and netflix i mean guys like do it to do it do they're it now fascinating <laughs> well now since that was a huge federal investigation there is a huge auction for all the stuff that was um being sold at the festival that never really happened so um you have you looked at this you've looked at this because you sent this out yeah so uh, is there anything that you would buy from this Firefest auction because i can tell you there are a couple things that i'm like you know what this looks pretty good. I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> like I could do it. Absolutely. Like they look good. And the, the value of them being this like so crazy one of a kind item. Yep. Like now you think about that and you realize everybody thinks that way. And that's why the prices are absolutely ridiculous. So you're going to have to pay the price. I would love a Firefest shirt. Um, I, I really would. And Right now, as of right now, now when this podcast comes out, this could very well change because the prices are certainly escalating. Uh, you're paying in the neighborhood of three hundred dollars or more. Oh yeah, for a shirt. Um, the hats seem to be the most popular item. I think. Um, what are those? Are over four hundred now for some of the hats? But yeah, they got what they got. What uh, sweatpants and joggers and wristbands and tokens, right? <laughs> the token that's the one thing i was like you know what i think i want the firefest token that would be cool that would be i cool. think i want the firefest token but like I, there's so much stuff on here there's like oh there's 130 items on here that you could buy from the firefest and i i'm gonna I, you know i feel like i'm gonna look at these because it ends on april not april august 14th august 13th is when it ends and i am gonna be looking a little close because if I could snag like a pair of joggers off here, 
be kind of sweet. You just say you've got Firefest joggers. I mean, the Firefest was saying, and you know, in like 20 years, you can lie and tell some story about how you went and ate, you know, crappy cheese sandwiches or something like that. You can just lie right, to, your, right. your, to your kids or grandkids or something. Like, I, this seems, I mean, this is legit. If you got some, you know, you got like 400, 500 bucks just to throw away, you know, <laughs> texasauction.com. Check it out. It's <laughs> all there. <laughs> it is. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I'd maybe spend two hundred on yeah. something. Yeah, and like, you know, is that where you'd probably go? Would you go any higher than that? I mean, I might go two fifty or something like that. But depending like, on what it is. yeah, yeah, depending on what it is. But I, you know, these wristbands, like that's legit. You know, right now, what like, it's like fifty bucks for the wristband? Yeah, for wristband. That'd be yeah, <laughs> one of a kind. I know it's one of a kind. It's just of a festival that you know they seized all the merch. And you got some of the merch. Like, so that I, would be that would be amazing to say. I mean, I, would you? I mean, I'd almost be like debate of whether to wear it or frame it, or like both. Maybe you wear yeah. it for a while and then frame it. Like that, that, that could be it's valuable. Yeah, because I was thinking the same thing. Because there's sweatshirts on there that are like that just say fire on it, and I think I would just frame that like a jersey. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's what I I would frame that like a jersey and just have that you know have that up there because it's. It's it's such an iconic thing. If you like music, if you like pop culture, Fire Festival has made its mark. You know. Do you think? Do you think those things will most things gain in value? Do you think that would actually yes. gain in value? Yeah, do you? thousand percent. I didn't know if like percent. maybe over time people would just like you know forgot about it, don't care as much about it, and then it's just like yeah, yeah, maybe. But I it, they are going to be even more you know more difficult to find and difficult to get. 10 15 20 years down yeah. the road so yeah, it's an investment because i think that when when you have things like that like these big pop these big moments in pop culture and that's such a huge moment and i think it's only going to the story of it is only to get bigger over time sure. you know what i mean like billy mcfarlane if wherever he is if he's in jail or whatever he's yeah. doing right now <laughs> he's going to come out and he's going to talk again you know what i mean so in right. like 10 years jaw rule's not going anywhere so the more stories are just going to come out that's Everybody true. in that Firefest documentary to talk is not going anywhere. They're all going to be around. So, like, just think about all the stories that we've heard our entire lives of something that happens. It's like you're, we're going to get this. Like, we're going to get a Firefest movie. Like, we're going to get all of these things. They're going to happen. And I am, um, I, and I really think they're going to appreciate. I think it's like there's going to be a moment where if you have a Firefest hat, it's going to go for like I don't know, fifteen grand or yeah. something <sighs> somewhere. Yeah. You know, Smithsonian's got to have Firefest right. stuff in there because that might be who you're betting against. You it might be, be just like, yeah, you could be bidding against the Smithsonian. Right. You got to have a Firefest <laughs> wing in there, right? Like, you can't talk about the 2010s without what talking was... about Firefest, right? Come on, you can't do that. <laughs> Firefest, good God, I might watch those documentaries again. What else am I going to do? I, I might just might just do it. They're that good. They're that yeah. good. Even though you know what happens, they're still that good. The, the amount of detail that they tell is just it's mind blowing. Yeah. Dude, I, wow, Firefest. I just <laughs> love it so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, and another thing. Oh, by the way, speaking of Netflix, Selling Sunset, our friend Chriselle, who loves the show, uh, <laughs> my wife's really good friend. <laughs> um, she, that season three of Selling Sunset uh, drops on Friday. So make sure you check it out. Nice. The show's awesome. And if you're a fan of real estate and drama, that's, that's where you want to go. Have you watched Selling Sunset, Dan? Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's Phenomenal. what I figured. Phenomenal you, show. You, yeah. And, you're a real you estate know. man. Right, right. I am. I'm a real estate yeah. man. And even if, <laughs> you know, we knew that Chriselle wasn't a, a close friend of the podcast and the show that it's still, you know, a, an amazing show that I'd be watching anyways. But uh, even that makes it even better. It's it's fantastic. No, it is. Uh, no, it's an awesome show. Make sure you check it out on, on Netflix. And last thing, Dan, uh, we are all sort of fans of The Bachelor here. I'm a big fan of The Bachelor here, but uh, there's a lot of drama with The Bachelorette. So the ba- have you heard about this? I have heard about it, yes. All right. So it started out Bachelorette Claire, right? Mm-hmm. And then she fell in love, apparently, before the show started. And they started filming the show, and she was like, I'm not doing this, locked herself in her room. And was like, I'm not coming out to do this. Now there's a new Bachelorette. Yeah. Her name's Tasia. She was on a couple seasons ago. And it's wild, dude. This is going to be the wildest season of The Bachelorette. And I think that we probably have to, you know, 
We might have to do a week by week breakdown. We did in the original version of the brunch breakdown podcast. Yeah. We we did, and that was a memorable season. I mean, for me, probably because it's I think maybe the only season that I've watched, <laughs> but it was really, really uh, interesting and entertaining, and it definitely was something we we recapped every week. I might be willing to get back on board uh, for that just because of all the yeah drama that's built up with it. This is this is crazy, and I mean, I'm sure ABC's loving it. I guess I'm sure it was a little hectic at the time um because it could have been the biggest fraud season in history and yeah. it would have just been terrible but now you know with this extra twist on it it's definitely going to be uh you know something to keep your eyes on oh my god we're all still in quarantine the ratings for the show are going to be absolutely be amazing <laughs> like they're going to be it's going to be wild because there's going to be like a three hour episode just on all this stuff that happened with claire it's, they're gonna start out so yeah bachelor's just gonna be on from eight to eleven it's just gonna be like just screw that's it what, like that's what always that's what always kills me those weeks where those like epi those long episodes come out of nowhere yeah. i'm like oh man <laughs> <laughs> i gotta be ready for this but if uh I, I i'm willing to commit to it now uh to to watch it this season and recap it yeah. um and i think Chris won't have a problem with it either. We'll have to naturally uh, check with him as well. I know we had to twist his arm a little bit last time, but again, we're all sitting at home. What else are you going to do? So exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm willing to, to dive in for it. Oh yeah. We're doing this. If you guys want us to do it, hit us up at brunch yes. breakdown, but I think we're going to do it anyways. Cause do we need to, do we need to have a Twitter poll out there to see what people we think? might. Yeah. We're, okay, I think we're going to have to do that. that. Regardless what you guys say, we're probably going to do it anyways because <laughs> this is going to be too much fun. It's going to be way, way, way too much fun. Right. Well, well, Dan, let's get into it, man. Uh, what we're listening to this week, always my favorite segment, talk all the music that we've been listening to and checking out. And uh, I want to get your opinion on this before we get to our picks for what we're listening to. Specifically, Billie Eilish just put out her new record, uh, My Future, just put out her new song. Uh, what do you think about it? I love, I'm, uh, I'm like loving the song. I've played it a ton. What do you think? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Billy as is like the entire world. So there's a really powerful statement that I just said. Um, <laughs> but it's, so it's hard for me to find songs that I don't like of hers. Um, it took me two two listens. I gave it, I gave it two listens, and I realized I I really really like it. Um, like I think I was thrown off the first time because right, it starts kind of soft and a little bit somber and slow, and I'm like, okay, you know, I. Billy does songs like this and I, and I get it. And maybe this is just another one of those. And I, you know, but when it's a single, you know, you tend, that doesn't tend to be a single. Right. Um, And then all of a sudden, almost exactly halfway through the song, that drum beat kicks in. It starts to pick up a little bit. It gives it, it kind of has a, a jazzy Amy Winehouse feel to it. Yes. Right. Yes. So, and I'm like, Ooh, I am a hundred percent on board with this so once i got the shock out of the way and listened to it the second third fifth tenth eleventh twelfth time now um uh, i'm loving it i'm I'm so glad that we got a song from her because last we'd heard from her we're not getting an album until next year we've had some singles from her along the way but this is this is what we needed it was great i think and lyrically it's really great too yeah i mean billy's lyrics are great like that's the one thing about billy her lyrics are her her lyrics are great but um no i'm so happy you said amy winehouse because i was literally nervous to say that because that's all i've been thinking about is like was i'm like was this song produced by mark ronson it sounds like an amy winehouse record like i can hear amy winehouse on this like it is just i i love this song so much i love when the beat changes and it's a happier vibe and whether this is the first single from an album or not, I do think this is like her letting people know that I'm in a better place. Maybe the music I'm working on is going to be lighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not just this one, you know, kind of, you know, it's not just going to all be what you expect from Billie Eilish. Because, I mean, she was, what, 16 when her album blew up. Now she's, you know, now she's 18. Mm-hmm. The things are changing in her life, you know, stuff like that. I think she just bought a house, I believe, and now she's moving out of her parents' house and stuff. So it's kind of like a lot of things going on with Billy. So I'm, I think, if anything, that's what this song represents, that it's like, okay, I'm happier now. I'm excited looking at my future. So I, I just really love that. I love this song. I'm yeah. happy you mentioned Amy Whitehouse because that's all I've been thinking about for like a week. <laughs> well, I'm glad you I'm glad you thought the yes. same thing too, because I was a little bit nervous to say it too. So <laughs> I was like, I, I hear it. I do. I really hear 
you know, it's something that she could, it definitely could be one of her, uh, one of her records. It could have been. So I'm, yeah, I'm glad we're on the same page there. Yes. It's, it's a great song. <laughs> Oh, the same page for sure. Well, dude, uh, let's uh, get into what we are listening to. Um, I am going to go with first one. It's a country song. Shouts to Chris. He's not with us right now. <laughs> but uh, Brad Paisley and Jimmy Allen, Freedom Was a Highway. Uh, it is just a, you're not going to like this song, Dan. I'm telling you that right now. This is just a country Great. jam. Like, it is windows down country. That's what this is. I, I love this song so much. And uh Jimmy Allen's been doing a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool collaborations. He's got a song with Nelly on his album that has uh, been on radio a lot. And that song's cool, but this one, this Freedom Was a Highway song, I, I just really like. So, shouts to Jimmy Allen and uh, Brad Paisley. Grew up like 30 minutes down the road. Yeah. Growing yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you got to get something. You're going to hate that song, though, dude. You know, hate it. we went <laughs> country free last week. I thought for sure without any of Chris's picks that we'd go this week, but. There you are. So, thank well, thank you for the at least advanced warning. So I'll just hit skip on it. Yeah, you're um, welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with somebody that I think is extremely talented and kind of underappreciated in this scene. Um, Ava Max. Uh, she released a song called "Who's Laughing Now," and I just think so much of her stuff is is so catchy, and I think she is talented. She's not just one of those like uh label produced pop singers i think she has range to her voice that if you like really listen to it's there uh but the production on a lot of her songs is really really good um and this one has like a synth reggae sort of caribbean summer feel to it with it it's which is very kind of unique i know i just said synth and reggae back to back which is like okay that sounds like a Does good it? song <laughs> uh but honestly we were talking about you know songs summer type you know, upbeat songs last week the week before that this is one uh who's laughing now by ava max so check that one out big fan of hers yeah. big fan yeah i like I, I like ava max a lot i like ava max a lot so I'm, I'm with you on that also uh sweet but psycho is like one of the songs that's on like every other peloton workout so <laughs> <laughs> so you've heard it and, and i'm telling you right now everyone listening to this has heard sweet but psycho but you have no idea that you've heard it we've all heard it you've yeah. everyone's heard it for just sure letting you know right now for it sure. is, it, it, like listen to you as soon as the song comes on you'll be like oh my god yes i've heard this song <laughs> You either love it or you hate it, but no, but right, regardless. Right, you hear it a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I really like Ava Max, so uh, big shouts to you on that one. Um, here's a song that I found out. I guess this song is apparently blowing up on TikTok. Apparently it is, right? Um, because sometimes I will just look at the, like, I'll look at what's trending on Apple Music or whatever and just, like, click on whatever the song title is and listen to it. That's how I found Blueberry Fago, honestly, because I was like, what is Blueberry Fago doing? Yeah. What? So that's how that happened. So there is uh, this song called Backyard Boy by Claire Rosencrantz. Um, it's an incredible song. The sound is awesome. She's got an EP out called Beverly Hills Boyfriend. That's really good, too. I don't know where this girl came from. I don't know. I, I like I, I, it's just this, it shocked me. It smacked me right in the mouth this week. I love like these this ep is super good she's got some other songs don't really like them that much but i will say whatever's going on in this ep and whoever's working with her and just and maybe it's just her i don't know um but claire rosencrantz check give that beverly hills boyfriend a listen and listen to backyard boy first and you will be in because if that is your if that is your kind of music that really gets you in you will be up uh, you'll probably be obsessed with her like i am right now because i just i can't say enough things about claire rosencrantz right now nice all right Big that's fan. a i love yeah. a good uh you discovery like out of nowhere one, yeah. you will like this one Dan. okay awesome yeah. i'm very excited i love that i love that uh next up i'm gonna go with an artist who dd somebody that you put one of their songs on uh a few weeks back it's been a few weeks now uh surf mesa i think it was ily i love you you put that one on there. That song has become uh, really, really popular um, over the past couple of weeks. So uh, there's a new release with uh, Gus Dapperton, who you will recognize from uh, the song with Benny, the Super Lonely, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago. So, of course, makes sense. Your song, your artist, my artist, we're the only two here. Uh, so they they teamed up for a song called Somewhere, 
Um, you know, it's kind of again, it's synthy electric uh, into the mix with, with with those two artists. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and so I think it's again, it's just if you like that style of music, kind of what you were saying, Didi, with uh, with either of those two. If you liked I L Y, uh, if you liked Super Lonely in uh, Gus's voice, um, check out Somewhere. So that's another one that was released last week. Yeah, Surf Mesa, good dude, young kid. Uh, thought of the idea of I Love You Baby in Starbucks parking lot. Wow. Yeah, Starbucks parking lot. Uh, I, I the it's escaping me the girl's name. On Emily. The song. Emily. That's right, Emily. Yeah. Um, he and he like called her up and he was like, I got this idea. This is what I'm doing. And then you know the rest is history. And that's it's a amazing. simple idea. I mean, it's just a cover of a you know of a classic. Yeah. And another cover of a class, like, I mean, everyone's, I feel like every generation has their own version of this song. I'm familiar with the Lauren Hill version and stuff. So, um, but yeah, but that song's just, I always, it's amazing. It's freaking great. That's, oh yeah. I can't say enough about that song. Um, Logic. We talked about this slightly last week, um, mm-hmm. but Amen, that's the song I want to put on this, this week because I have listened to that song like every single morning. It's like coffee. Amen is so good. I think it's the, is it the last song. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's the second, second to last, to last. Song the album. And it is super good. It should have been the last song. Like that song yeah. should either have been the first song or the last song on this album because it is that good. It's just like that is the end of this thing. He says everything he needs to say. And I get the last track is fine. But like this was where if you're if you're really doing this whole I'm retiring, this is the end of logic thing, which I don't believe. I don't think anybody actually believes. That's the song that you end on. Because that song is just, it is perfect. Like, it takes you to church. It takes you everywhere. You want to hear this song live. Like, it is, you know, I, I, have go- I have grown kind of annoyed with Logic over the last couple years. But, like, this song is like, this is, he's in his, he's, he's in his bag. He's in his pocket. It's perfect place. Uh, Amen's amazing. I love that song. Yeah, I had uh, I had that on my list, too, uh, from Logic. So I know, yeah, we touched lightly on it last week. And I gave you a very quick you know, yeah. opinion on the album. And I got a chance to really dive in and listen to it. And I really like it. I really think um, it's good. I also like hit my line uh, off of those tracks as well, but you're right. I, com- I couldn't agree with you more on amen being first track or last track. And that's, you know, I don't think it's his, his last work. Um, I don't think it's his best work as a complete album. Um, so I think that's going to be a motivating factor. And, you know, artists have different styles in different ways now where, you know, they start families and then they come back and they don't have to do, you know, a 60 city tour or something insane like that. They can have more control over it. So maybe, he's, you know, his demand goes up and then he's able to, you know, give those demands to labels and things like that. But I hope it's not the the last that we hear of them, but definitely check out that No Pressure album and at least those uh, those two tracks we named. He's made so much money. Logic has made so much money. Yeah. <laughs> like it's I, I understand he have to come back he doesn't have to come back that is for sure i don't i believe that he is coming back but i understand if he's just like you know what i'm just gonna call it a day because he's yeah. made a lot of money yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh do you got another dan i got uh yeah one last one that i'll add on there um a band called glass animals some people may or may not be familiar with uh, with their work uh, kind of in that alternative genre. But uh, they released a song um, off their upcoming album. It actually comes out this Friday. The album's called Dreamland. Um, they delayed it from a summer release. But the song is called It's All So Incredibly Loud. And, you know, it's really unique where the song actually crescendos and gets louder throughout the song. And they do that just not by, you know, turning up the volume per se, but they add these different layers and they add this orchestral element um, that's really, really unique. And the first time I just listened to it, I kind of went through it. I thought, okay, this, that's a pretty good song. And then I went back and I kept listening to it again and again and again. And the way that they kind of play off that loud title, um, you know, you might have to listen for it, you know, to, to notice the, the difference in the volume and the layers. But I think it's really masterfully produced um with it and really kind of a unique song so i'm gonna throw that one on the list too from glass animals nice nice i have i have one i want to throw back um to a few years ago speaking we were talking about concerts and i actually this song i put this on a playlist when we were in palm springs because i hadn't heard it in a long time major laser lean on Ooh, 
we are very much so lacking summer songs right now. You know, summer starting to come out. Some songs came out late. Taylor Swift's really, she's kind of owning the charts right now with a bunch of fall music, fall winter music. But so I had to listen to something good. Major Lazer, Lean On. Like that song is still as good as it might even be better now than the first time that I heard it. <laughs> back then so um and you know major laser they're one of the acts that was it our first coachella we went to was that wow well, well i got the posters in front of me i should be able to uh figure out yeah which one yes yes yeah yes year one uh yeah major laser was our first year at coachella yes 2016 major laser brought out the band for uh yeah for lean on like it's absolutely incredible so that's the other song that i've been listening to a lot because and i've been listening to a lot of songs like cheerleader a bunch of different songs mm-hmm. of you know, last songs of the summer because we just don't have that this year. You know what I mean? And, and those songs just brighten, you know, the mood up, whether you're leaving your house or, you know, you're on the way to Target or whatever. Like those, you know, the listen to the songs of the summer, they help. They help. I love it. I, lo- I appreciate you bringing that back because, yeah, we need those positive summer type of songs. And of course, that one with my girl Meur on there. Uh, she's amazing. And that song's amazing. That's a great pick. <laughs> Meur. <laughs> <laughs> oh dan this has been another fun one of the brunch breakdown this has we covered a, a lot here today we managed to do it uh with a table for two uh which is fine we hope that we'll have chris back uh soon hopefully next week but uh yeah yeah we got a, a lot covered there and uh like we said earlier we want to hear from you guys on some of those topics get your thoughts let us know if you want us to watch the bachelor uh or bachelorette or bachelor bachelorette but bachelorette. we're gonna probably do it we're probably gonna do it anyways. So uh, you can tweet Chris to convince him uh, of reasons yeah. why. But yeah, this was uh, this was another good one. Yes, another good one. Yeah, tweet at Chris Gates. Let him know that we are doing the Bachelorette and why, because he will need convincing. Yeah, that he will need it. But we're gonna do it anyways. We're just gonna sneak. <laughs> it on we're just gonna start talking about it. He won't know. He won't know why. So right. all right. So make sure you follow us at Brunch Breakdown. Make sure you follow Brunch Breakdown on YouTube. Follow us on all the things. To Spotify, you can listen to the podcast and listen to the, the Sounds of Brunch playlist. Also, um, what are we on? Stitcher. We're on everything. Google all Podcasts, the- Apple Podcasts, um, everything. Yeah, we are. We're really, you know, we really are everywhere that uh, podcasts are available. Yeah, Facebook, uh, at Brunch Breakdown. Uh, make sure you follow us on there. You can see a lot more long-form content on there as well, on Twitter too. So everywhere, just hit up Brunch Breakdown. And we will uh, we will give you a, a nice, fun menu. Excited. Yes, yes. Always. I, I like the new weekly f- format that we're doing here. I hope the listeners are enjoying it. I meant to j- give a shout out to our uh, our listener in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, still still chiming in every week. So appreciate yes. you. <laughs> appreciate your uh, loyalty. So we're, we're going global as we as we like to do. Wait, when we're allowed to tour, we're going straight Dublin's first on on the first list. on the list. <laughs> first on the list, brunch breakdown on our merch. It just says Dublin on the back. Right, I love it. You know, if you want your city to be on the back. Keep listening to the brunch breakdown. That's but right. Dublin right now is the only tour stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, I will. Uh, we'll talk soon, man. And we'll talk yeah. next week, and we'll, uh, talk- we'll see you at the table. Yeah. See ya. Later. <laughs>